This is the sodium guide star. So this was the very first year of the strategic defense initiative, you know, Star Wars. And we were challenged as a scientific community to think of anything that we could that might stop missile attacks from the Russians. And one of the things that was obvious was maybe you can burn them out of the sky with high power lasers. And I remember that Senator Malcolm Wallop, maybe some of you remember him, was a big fan of that. He wanted to put them in space, but that's very expensive and difficult. And so an alternative would be to put them on the ground. And the reason Senator Wallop didn't like that was because he knew a little bit of physics. And the physics is if you take a megawatt laser and you aim it at a incoming attacker from the ground, by the time the laser gets to the attacker, it's broken up into hundreds of little beams and none of the little beams has enough power to cause any damage. You don't have that problem in space because the laser doesn't have to go through the atmosphere. And so this is something that's caused by the little patches of warm and cool air in the atmosphere. Even if it's a completely blue sky, it looks perfectly transparent. It's really not for lasers. It was known at that time that you could solve this problem if you could measure the distorting effects of the atmosphere, and astronomers knew how to do that. So at night, if you have a really bright star, you can measure the incoming radiation. And what happens is the radiation is supposed to be a plain wave, nice and flat, coming from a star. But as it goes through the atmosphere, it gets bent up and twisted. And so as it's coming down toward your telescope or going toward the target, if you're going the other way, because of this twist, it won't focus properly. So you don't get a nice point. You get all sorts of points, hundreds of them. And so the astronomers knew you could fix it by distorting the astronomical mirrors. They had what they call rubber mirrors. And so you would squeeze the mirror in just such a way that when this distorted wave would hit the mirror, it would bounce and it would come up perfectly flat. And then you could focus it. And so that was called adaptive optics. But to make adaptive optics, optics work, you had to be able to measure the distortions of the atmosphere. And there were only four or five stars at night that were bright enough to do this. And so unless the Russians were accommodating enough to attack us from the directions of those four or five stars, there was no way we could overcome this distortion. We had a very secret meeting in 1982, and there were a number of generals in from the Air Force. And I said, well, I know how to make artificial stars because there's a layer of sodium atoms over the Earth at about 100 kilometers, and all you have to do is pay to make a laser that will excite the sodium atoms, and then you can make a yellow star wherever you like, including the direction of the target you're trying to kill. And so most of the people at the meeting had never heard of this. By chance, I knew about it. And to the Air forces credit, they went back to Washington and they did due diligence. This was all very secret. And they got back to me later in the summer and said, we're going to try it out. And we're building a secret observatory in New Mexico, south of Albuquerque. And I was getting quite nervous now because this was many millions of dollars on my suggestion, which had never been tested. But to my relief, they tested it and it worked the first time. So I got a lot of credit then in the classified world in Washington. Most people didn't hear about it for 15 years when it was finally declassified. I will say if you go to any big telescope today around the world, they all have these yellow guide stars.